Well, hello, friends. This here is David Vose. It's good to see everybody today. Today is January 17th, 2016. It's good to see everybody today. Well, we've been talking about some very, very important things. I've done three videos now. This will be the fourth. And so, um, I know a lot of you will watch all of these because you're anxious to hear what's happened to me because there's been a lot of experiences that have happened. And I know all of you, many of you have had many of the experiences. And uh, I think one of the reasons why I'm doing this is so that people can feel safe talking about the things that have happened to them. Because you see, we live in a world where it's, it's a big mystery. Isn't that amazing that we live in a world where everything is a mystery? Some of us have experiences of things that have happened to us when we were children. And then... Uh, we grew up and we forgot about those things because people made fun of us. So we didn't talk about it anymore. And then some of us just couldn't get it off our mind. Maybe we were abused in our religion or in our families. A lot of times that abuse can be good. I mean, the things that we suffer can be good sometimes because everything works for good to those who love our Father in Heaven. And it turns out that these experiences give us understanding. and they Because a lot of times it's like a baby that has a pacifier. And it's hard to get that pacifier away from the baby because if you take that pacifier away the baby begins to cry and then we feel sorry for him we give him the pacifier and they never get over it so we have to mature and grow up and so sometimes it events that happen are events that are taking something away from us that we didn't need see sometimes these things are traumatic like we lost our religion that's very traumatic but it's necessary and the pain that you felt was merely the lightning of this physical realm. See, as you leave this physical realm and you go into the light, sometimes it's a little bit painful because the um, the separation, though necessary, is painful to the carnal self because it, you feel like you're losing yourself. But really you're just gaining the truth and the light and the freedom and once you experience that freedom it's beautiful but along the way there's a lot of pain and suffering maybe you lost a loved one I don't want to be hurtful I want to have uh, understanding and I want you to understand that I understand it hurts and nobody likes to leave leave behind a loved one but I'm telling you that everything you go through is necessary you don't really lose any loved ones. I've been told that my mother and my sister are both okay. I was even shown where they were and how they're living. and I was told that they're not yet perfected. They're not in paradise yet. They're in a world similar to where we are here. But they're happy and they're okay and they're being protected. They're being taken care of. But an angel took me to a wall, and I was told that on the other side of that wall was my sister and my mother. But I, I couldn't go over there because they said if I went over there, I would have to stay, and I couldn't come back. So, of course, I, I couldn't do that. But I asked the angel, can I please see just... I want to see if they're okay. I want to see my mother. And so they said, well, here's what we can do. And they made a hole in the wall so that I could see through. And I got to see my mom and my sister. And I knew that, and, and see, and you know, everything was there just the way I remember my mother. You know, she had the quilt on the couch and the, the house was all clean and there was beans on the stove. And uh, it just was amazing and wonderful to see that they were okay and they were happy. 
But I couldn't go through that hole and go in there because then I wouldn't be able to come back. But I just want you to know that everything we go through, a lot of you have experiences. And I want you to know that these experiences are teaching us. But it takes a long time. See, we have many years to learn. In fact, sometimes we have many lifetimes. And there isn't any hurry. We're going to be all right. As the Bible says that nobody can snatch us out of our Father's hand. He loves us all and does not desire any should perish. And none of us will, because whatever our Father in Heaven desires, that is what's going to happen. So you see, this world is just all part of the plan. And anyone who in this world does something very, very bad, They end up having to pay for that. This is a consequence to everything we do. But the only reason for correction is to make us better. So everybody who goes through these things and have to be corrected, they learn. And then they too can rise up. That's why Jesus said it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for the Jewish people in his day. Because they were so blind... They had completely rejected the angels of our Father in Heaven and the truths. And they were blinded by this God they had, Jehovah, who was a murderer and a liar, and who has really set the earth back quite a while with his laws of slavery and ignorance and evil. So Jesus had compassion, and this is why he came to the earth, to set us free from this and, and annul that contract that human beings have made with this evil God to keep us in this bondage. So, about six or seven months ago, as I was telling you in the last video, I had a very unique experience. You see, I'd been praying a lot about, you know, I had all these experiences and sometimes we're just not sure what's really happening to us. And I want to explain to you first, before I explain this, you should tell you what happened actually and I will tell you that here in this video how I received these contraptions so I can talk to them more clearly but you have to know what these things are for because a lot of you are talking about well, why would you need a phone right it's not a phone but some of you call into uh, technological advice right the device that we can communicate well the reason is is because these beings live in spiritual place they have physical realms where they live, just like we live. But the only way they can communicate is through the mind, through telepathy. Well, you know, you have to remember we talked about how Jesus mentioned that we we should um, understand that there's a left side and a right side, left hand, right hand, inner coat, outer coat. Let's see, one side of the boat and the other side of the boat. And we got to fish on the right side to bring in that abundance. Because if you're on the wrong side of the boat and you're trying to fish over there, you're not going to get a lot of fish. The reason that Jesus talked about that is because he was talking about the physical carnal mind and the supernatural spiritual man. So if you're thinking with the carnal conscious mind, you're not going to get a lot of things done. There's a vast, abundant life that we're not aware of because we're not conscious of it. There are spiritual existence. There are dreams. There are visions that we can have that help us bring that spiritual into the physical. So if we're not really spiritual yet, and we can't go there because we're not spiritual, and we can't live there because we're not spiritual, because we're carnal, then the only thing we can do is receive messages from that realm. So some of us aren't ready to just walk right into us to another realm on another planet and and live with the the angels because you see I, I gave an illustration in one of my other videos that if we humans find a snake pit we don't jump down there and live with the snakes we 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 cringe at, at that and we just we run and we're scared and we keep our children away from the snakes we don't live in a in a rat infested dirty barn you see because we want to be clean it's not that we're prejudiced against rats. We, we have compassion for, for rats and snakes. 
At least we should, because they're creatures with sentient minds, and, and they have pain. But we may leave them alone to, the, to their own devices and their own will, but we don't have to live with them, because, you see, we're of a different nature. And that's why it says, the old saying, birds of a, of a feather flock together. So, you see, that's why a lot of demonic activity is on this earth, because the human mind is so dark and sometimes deceptive, deceptive that the only beings that really enjoy being around us are some of these darker forces that really enjoy the wickedness that they spawn onto us. So, they actually try to get us to do bad things, as they love bad things, and they enjoy it. But the angels, they're here to help us, and they only come when we need them. They don't, it's very difficult for the higher advanced beings to live around us and experience all this wickedness all the time. So they come as a sacrifice to help us and to protect us. And all we have to do at any time when we're in trouble is call out. See, because our Father in Heaven never, never allows us to be alone. He never abandons us. And He keeps beckoning us. And the angels are always there. So, the reason then for these devices is for people like myself that weren't re really ready to just right off the earth like Enoch and go to this place and see all the wonderful glories. I hadn't advanced enough and I needed help because my mind wasn't able to, to grasp some of the things they were telling me. Um, so, the whole point is, is that if we have faith, we can do anything. We don't need a stone. We don't need a vision because we can go right on in but I'm still in this place where I need visions where I need help and the angels come and they help me and that's where we all are on this planet and there's very few you see the road the road to that realm is very narrow and so very few people find it and it takes a long time but they have shared many things with me and because most people on this earth don't know and understand and they're afraid, they've, they've asked me to go and explain to you guys that you don't have to be afraid and you can use these things. But the goal is that we begin to understand that the universe itself is a Urim and Thummim. See, in every action that we take, everything is provided for us in the moment. And whatever we ask at any moment, it's always given to us and it, it's according to your faith that it's given just as you have faith that is what's given to you sometimes we have so much fear all we're doing is creating monsters and so everything that happens to us is just our own crazy life and we have these life patterns that should keep happening over and over again and if you've got one of those patterns going on you need to examine your mind and your heart So anyway, I was um, asking and praying about how I could understand and receive more faith and how I could grasp what they were telling me and know what it is they wanted me to do. And They kept telling me that I needed to go to this particular place. It was a mountain here in New Mexico. It's not very far from me. And um, at the mountain, the name of it's called Mystery Mountain. Well, I had read something about someone who had gone to this place and they found a stone that is a huge stone. It's also called the Decalogue Mountain because this stone has the Ten Commandments written on it in Paleographic Hebrew. Well, here's the interesting thing. There were people who saw this stone in the 1800s for sure because there's people who wrote, you know, um, they've chiseled out on the stone. You know, I was here and it was in the 1800s. There were people in like 1930 that were there. And according to the Indians, in this area, the Native Americans, they say it was here when they got here. And that was about 400 years ago. So, the interesting thing is, is that no one could interpret Paleographic Hebrew or write Paleographic Hebrew. Not like that. I mean, you, you know, somewhere, 
Somebody could have found a, a letter and then chiseled that into the stone. But to be able to write it fluently and accurately this way would have been impossible because this was a, a dead language. Nobody knew how to read it. It hadn't been used for 2,000 years since the time of Christ. So, anyone who ever found out about this, there were a few scholars that went up there and looked at this stone. I read about it. And they were saying, we can't explain it. You know, This thing might be really 2,000 years old because we can't explain this. We don't know how it got here. But they couldn't understand why there was a stone written in Paleographic Hebrew here in America in New Mexico. Well, it turns out there's a lot of writings intermingled with the Native American pictographs that are all up and down this valley. It goes all the way up into Colorado. There's a place called Purgatory Canyon that has a lot of this Indian uh, petroglyphs. And they, and they go all the way down into Mexico. And there are a lot of different just archaic scribbles and dinosaurs and horses and little marks and things. Well, they didn't realize that some of these little markings were letters and there were actually Hebrew letters written on the rocks intermingled with all of this. And up in Colorado, they found many Hebrew letters and, and words. There's been some other stuff that I don't want to get into in this video because it would take too long and I want to get to what happened to me. But So I was learning all about this and very interested. Well, for some reason, nobody has a map and nobody knows where it was. They just know what, they just say it's this mountain. And they don't even really pinpoint the mountain. So I drove out there. It's uh, by Las Lunas, New Mexico. Well, I drove out there and I'm looking around and I see several mountains that could be it. And I didn't know which one. And there wasn't any signs. There's just no way. All I saw was that there were a lot of fences with big signs up says no trespassing. Do not cross this. You will be shot on spot. You know, the... Uh, fines of 5,000, you know, imprisonment, whatever. It was just really scary. And I thought, oh, I don't want to go out there. But I knew that I had to go and I had to see this mountain. So I kept driving around looking for it. So finally, I saw this one particular mountain that I thought, this has got to be it. So I got out and parked the car and there was actually a gate there, which really helped me to understand that this might be the right place because this gate was open. And it looked like a trail, like others had gone on this trail. So I followed it. Well, it wandered around and kind of stopped. And I was like lost out in this desert. And I kept searching around. And I didn't know what to do. I couldn't find it. I was going to have to go home. And then all of a sudden, out jumped three deer. A big buck. And it looked like his wife and their fawn or something. It was three deer. And... They just jumped out right in front of me and stopped and just looked at me. And then it's almost to say, come on, follow us. It was very amazing in my heart. It, it, something just kind of fluttered and I knew that this was my guidance. Because remember, it, this was in the middle of summer and it was like 102 degrees out. It was 102 degrees that day. So there's no water on top of that mountain and there's no shade. So it's very unusual that the deer were going up the mountain. At that time of day, because I ended up going late. By the time I got there, it was almost noon or something. And it was real hot. These deer should have been going down the mountain trying to find some shade or some water. But they didn't. They, they were going up. And they didn't go very fast. They just stayed ahead of me. And they guided me right to this stone. Which is very amazing to me. And then as soon as I found the stone, they disappeared. They bounced off and went over the hill and I didn't find them anymore. So I got to see the stone and I took some pictures of it. And um, at the very top of this mountain, there's what appears to be like an altar. And at the base of the altar is the name of Jehovah, written in Paleographic Hebrew. And over to the right, on another stone next to it, in some sort of petroglyph fashion is this American Indian petroglyph thing that shows the stars 
as they were in the year 106 BC. It's a star chart, and others have noted this, and you can do some research on this. But it's a star chart, and um, it basically pinpoints when this thing was written. So I'm standing there, and I'm looking at all this, and I'm just amazed, and I'm praying. So I turn around, and I'm praying all the way down the hill. I'm kind of trotting down the hill, and I'm just thoughts going through my mind, and it's just so sacred a place, and I'm just so amazed at this. And I'm praying to Father in Heaven, I'm saying, Father, this place is amazing. And I know that it is sacred here. And I'm so grateful that I was able to see this. So I asked, could you please give me something to take back with me? Because I know this place is sacred. And I want to be able to understand it. And I want you to help me to understand who these people are. And I would just like to know why this is all here and what happened. And in my mind, they gave me a picture of the Urim and Thummim in the ephod. And basically, they explained to me that these people that lived here, lived here a long time ago. So they, they explained to me that this place that, that I was at was a, a place where in ancient times, about 600 BC, some of the Jewish people migrated from Palestine and came here. And they had a city there, and they had a king, and they also had a priesthood just like the one there in Palestine. And they also had a device that, like in the Bible, they called the ephod. And this was the most amazing thing in my that I've ever had happen to me. But they explained that they were going to give me this relic that belonged to these people and it was preserved there. So as I was praying and I said Amen, I made one step after I said Amen and there on a rock was this ephod. And then on top was the Urim and Thummim. It was a plate, a rock plate with these rocks set in a square. And, in, and the whole thing was sitting on another rock that was jetting up from the ground. It was permanent. It was just a, a rock in the ground. It was just laying there as though it were placed there for me. I literally hit the ground on my knees. And I... I looked at it and basically with tears in my eyes because I knew what I was seeing was the Urim and Thummim of a people from an ancient day. And these were the original ancestors of the American Indians. And so I picked it up and I took it home. And I have it in my home. So they explained to me that this was a very sacred object and that I would have to take it home and put it someplace safe. Now, I know a lot of you aren't going to believe this, and that's all right. This is what happened to me. But it's very difficult for us human beings in this present stage to break through this consciousness and get into the spiritual realm and be able, begin to, to receive spiritual messages and information. So sometimes we need help. So that's what happened to me, and it's a beautiful thing. And I am so grateful for my Father in Heaven. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I, I want to tell you, but I don't think that I can, you know, get anything more into this video. So I'm going to stop with that explanation here, and I'll continue on from there in the next video. But friends, you've got to pray, and you got to believe, because there's an amazing world out there. And we humans, we're the children of our Father in Heaven, and we've got so much potential. So, tune in uh, tomorrow, and I'll start from there, and we'll talk more about this. And you guys have a great day. This here's David Vos, and we'll see you tomorrow.